Making a good shot on an animal is something I take great pride in. And if you checked out our hunts on this channel, you'll see for the most part, we do a pretty good job at killing animals quickly, humanely, and ethically. Howdy everybody, my name is Keith Warren and welcome to our channel where on this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain to you what happens to a bullet as it leaves the end of a barrel. This video is brought to you by Online Outfitters, and we'll tell you more about them at the end of the video. Now, this video is intended for the average shooter, not the mathematician that has more degrees than a rectal thermometer. So let's go ahead and get started, all right? Bullets are nothing more than projectiles, and some of the things that affect bullets are uh, the resistance of the barrel, okay, the resistance of the bullet traveling through the barrel. Another uh, thing is wind, okay? You ask any shooter who shot on windy days, they can tell you, how much bullet drift the, the wind can cause, especially in really severely windy conditions. But this video right here, we really wanna focus on bullet drop. All right, so this is horizontal trajectory. This vertical line represents height or inches, and the horizontal line right here is distance in yards or meters. And so keep in mind, the bullet's gonna leave here, and somewhere out here, it's gonna hit the ground, depending on what rifle you're shooting. Now the distance bullets travel will be determined by whatever gun you're shooting, and Basically, all of them are gonna vary. With that said, the arc of the bullet will generally be the same, but the arc on some ammo will be flatter than on others due to velocity. Now this straight line represents the axis of the barrel. In other words, the center of the barrel that goes all the way out to infinity. And this red line right here on scope goes all the way out to infinity as well. At some point, these are gonna cross the scope and the axis, but Keep in mind that your bullet travels in an arc, okay? So it's going to leave the barrel slightly heading upwards. And at some point, it's gonna cross the path of the scope line. And it's gonna continue up, and then all of a sudden it's gonna reach its maximum height, and then it's gonna start falling again, and it's gonna cross your center line of your scope again before it hits the earth. So as we're looking at these charts, I wanna break away from this for a minute and say, if you're watching this video, uh, I appreciate it. And I want to encourage you to make sure and subscribe to the channel if you find this video useful. More than half the people that are watching our videos online, they appreciate the videos, so they leave comments, but they don't subscribe. So I encourage you, please subscribe. So basically at two points during this bullet travel, your gun is going to be zeroed on your crosshairs. It's going to be here and here. Most people wind up sighting in a rifle dead on at 100 yards, and the bullet is actually in many cases, depending upon the caliber and the weight of the bullet, there's a lot of variables, but your bullet is going to be at its height past the 100 yard point. At some point, it's gonna come back. So I wanna point this out. At two different points or distances, your gun is gonna be zeroed in dead on. As far as how to find that out, there's mathematical equations you can get online to figure that out. But the best way I know how to do that is to go out and test it yourself. If you've got a gun, you're shooting at 100 yards and you want it sighted in at 100 yards. Sight it in at 100 and then take it out to 200 without changing anything and see where it hits. If the gun is below zero or above zero, in other words, your point of impact at 100 yards, you know that, hey, that little second spot that that bullet's gonna cross could be shorter than 200 yards or longer than 200 yards. So it's really a matter of trial and error to be able to find out where that second line is. So I hope this kind of explains to you what's going on ballistically as the bullet leaves the barrel. At no time during the flight of the bullet path will the bullet ever go above the axis of the center line of the barrel. It cannot, and the reason why is because of gravity. If you think about it like this, if you've got a water hose, you turn a water hose on full power, and you're trying to squirt somebody, you've got an arc. Imagine that's your bullet, it's an arc. And no matter how much pressure you put on that water, you're not gonna be able to make that water stay up at the same position that hose is pointing out to infinity. Why? Because of gravity. It's the same effect on a bullet. So uh, ballistics or something, it's a lot of trial and error, but understanding ballistics and what's going on with your gun and with your bullet as it leaves the barrel is really, really important to be able to make a good shot. Hopefully I did a good enough job explaining this to you. If not, go ahead and post comments below. In the next video, I'll try to do a better job. I know I'm not a good artist, but uh, this kind of explains the basics about what's going on and how you can become a better marksman by knowing the ballistics on your bullet. We'd like to thank Online Outfitters for providing us with all of our awesome gear that we use in our shows. From thermal gear to ammunition, if we need it, they have it. 
For more information, check out Online Outfitters on our supporters page linked in the description of this video. With ammo in short supply, everybody needs to know how to sight their rifle in with as few shots as possible. Howdy everybody, my name is Keith Warren and I'm gonna show you how to sight in any modern sporting rifle or bolt gun that has a scope on it. How to sight it in with just two shots. It's gonna save you time and valuable ammo.